Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest version of uh, Tales, Tales from Tales, Outer Tales, Space, Tales, Space, Tales, Space, where I take an HFY story from somewhere around the internet and read it aloud for your enjoyment. All the relevant links are down below. Like, subscribe, and all that YouTube comf to help this video and channel grow. Anyways, as always, I hope that you enjoy. I would just like to thank the following tier 5 patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. Data Magnet and Bob the Dragon. Thank you again. And now, on to the story. Story number 1. Peace, War, Hell. Written by Ogosh. I have been head tactician of the United Federation of Species for 72 cycles. Before that... I was apprenticed to the previous head for 119 cycles. I've conquered worlds, turned tides, and bolstered the morale of millions. But in this moment, I've never felt greater shame or disgust in myself, because I have made an inexcusable tactical error. I commanded the humans to win our war. We found the humans' homeworlds 19 cycles into our war with the Coalition. We were at a sandstorm, so we expanded outwards in other directions, seeking resource-rich planets and, uh, hopefully, lesser races to conscript. We gave the humans weapons, ships, eventually entire fleets, and told them to end this war. I personally instructed the human generals by any means. Oh, gods... I've sealed my fate with those three words. In two cycles, our retreating lines had halted. One cycle after that, we began to retake entire systems. Half a cycle after that, our enemy had lost all morale, and their high command was reading. Now, two microcycles later, I stand in the dimly lit conference room with our head diplomat, the presidential envoy, my apprentice, and to my left, the human tactician was responsible for the Galilee 6 incident. Every eye in the room watched it from the periphery as it calmly organized several sheets of white material with human writing printed on them, awaiting the comm link with the Coalition High Command. From behind me, I felt my apprentice's eyes staring at the back of my head. I feel his embarrassment. His shame is mine, too. The large screen in front of us bloomed and the coalition leaders came into view. Twelve impeccably dressed bureaucrats and military leaders stood in varying states of anger and unrest as Prime Ministers leered back at us. I could see from the preview screen that only our president, one of his generals, and half of myself were being broadcast to them. Valshi, the Prime Minister growled with a sullen contempt. What in the hell have you been doing? President Varshi stood motionless behind his podium. He had prepared to take responsibility and responded as evenly as he could. Prime Minister Akuku, I have asked this meeting so that we may come to an accord of indefinite ceasefire, while terms of peace can be negotiated. You want to talk about peace after the atrocities you've committed? Sir... Our actions in this conflict have not broken any laws of engagement established by... And what about the laws of morality? The Prime Minister was frothing. Explosives hidden in the ground beneath abandoned fronts, incendiary weapons, the wanton destruction of fertile farmland, hacking into Prime World media hubs and broadcasting lies about the coalition, the murdering of high officials light years away from fronts. I glanced over at the human who was staring disinterestedly at the screen with its arms crossed in front of it. I had spoken to it about these tactics. It had a word for each of them. Landmines, napalm, scorched earth, propaganda. And, worst of all, assassination. What a terrible word. There may be no laws to prevent such actions, the Prime Minister continued, but we both know damn well it's because no one thought a respectable military leader would stoop so low as to utilize them. He was right, of course. What we let the humans do was monstrous. Prime Minister, President Varshi tried to calm him. 
The sooner we return to the negotiation table, the sooner- You have no honor, Vashi. Your entire federation are honorless fools winning war through murder and atrocity. There was a blur of motion to my left. The human crossed in front of me with a dazzling speed and pushed the president aside with one hand. The president kept from falling by grabbing onto the jacket of the chief of staff and stared back in disbelief at the human that assaulted him, but no one made a move to detain it. The human glared back at the prime minister with a look of fury on his face, fury that dwarfed the ministers. Despite the initial shock, the Akoko showed no signs of backing down, who are you? I am the one responsible for your defeat at Galilee 6, and every other loss you'll suffer for the past cycle. The Prime Minister's eyes widened as he realized what the creature he was arguing with was capable of. Let me tell you something about honor, you bureaucratic piece of crap. Honor doesn't end wars. Honor doesn't make war better or nicer. War is war, and it'll always be hell. Honor didn't stop our cannons when your generals led your fleets into yet another ambush. Honor didn't stop your fields from burning and let your food supply for six systems run dangerously low. Right now, we're besieging more than a dozen coalition worlds with perfect blockades around the planets. No one can leave. Nothing can get in we bombard their defenses hourly. We estimate the first world will run out of food in half a cycle without aid. How long do you think it'll be after that when they learn they can't eat honor? The silence hung in the air like a deuce. Everyone stepped away from the monster called human. The Prime Minister did everything in his power to keep from staggering back. Your tactics have killed millions but the Prime Minister. As I understand it, shot back the human, your war has been at a stalemate for 13 cycles. How many millions have died in that time? How many billions more will have died if we hadn't tipped the scales? The Prime Minister stunk. Except the ceasefire today, the human continued calmer, and you'll be saving all of those lives. Decline and we continue to show you how humans go to war. The Prime Minister was very visibly shaken, as was our President and everyone else. You're mad, the Prime Minister shuddered. Perhaps the human's voice was now completely still. If its rage was disquieting, its calm was all but terrifying. But by our estimates, our fleets will reach the Coalition Prime Worlds in less than half a cycle. Make peace, or I'll personally do to your own world what I did to Galilee 6, and drop a fecking moon on your front door. The human turned and walked past me to collect his things as the President cautiously stood back up at the podium. By the gods, I spoke in hush dread, what have I unleashed upon the galaxy? I jumped as the human placed a hand on my shoulder and looked up at me with half a smile. Peace. End of story. Story number two. Negotiations. Written by Glitchkey. Before we begin, I want to be sure of a few things. This device you provided us with, it is 100% effective at understanding and translating languages, correct? Really, we occasionally find a race with one or two concepts that it has trouble with, but that's easily smoothed over. One or two? Uh, okay, that's odd. They've already found something it can't translate. Um, sort of, yes. Mind humoring me for a few minutes? Certainly. After all, it can take years to accept a race into the Federation. Excellent. This shouldn't take too much time. I mentioned that we found some issues with your device. Allow me to demonstrate. Espionage. Error, no analog found. Reverse engineering. Error, no analog found. Spycraft. Error, no analog found. Overwhelming force. Error, no scorched earth. Error, kamikaze. Er 
Blitzkrieg, stealth, mutually assured destruction, acceptable losses, pyric victory, guerrilla warfare, encirclement, entrenchment, siege. Too many errors detected, rebooting, running self-diagnostic. No discrepancies found. Zena sighed. Why do you have a word for? What was all of that just now? We were confused about that too. So we took a look at the information you sent us as part of first contact with us. We noticed something interesting. Every single race in your federation is carnivorous. Why is that? First contact has always been made after sapien races make it to multiple worlds. We have never found a sapient herbivorous race which failed to destroy themselves in resource wars and aggressive action. We've never found herbivores capable of surviving long enough to leave their own world. And the race you have found, while commonly using threat displays, do not waste resources and wars they cannot easily win, correct? Wasted resources means decreased likelihood of survival. And yet herbivores constantly waste resources on aggression and movement on having more young than will possibly survive. And they die for it. That is exactly why we've never encountered a space-bearing herbivores. Their inherent aggression is their own demise. Indeed, uh, now back to the subject at hand. I'll ask you before we continue. What can you offer humans for joining your federation? We've already sent an Arthur. You've seen that, I'm sure. And I'm asking, what else do you have to offer? Nothing. I'm not sure why you're... May I have permission to connect my data pad with the ship's computers? Yes, if you like. Computer, show video, Hiroshima. That's, um, uh, you're using weapons of that scale on a population center. How recent was this? Three centuries ago, prior to our invention of spaceflight, part of a much larger conflict. This is a relatively minor example of uh, overwhelming false error. No, uh, chatter, computer. Now, Infoshi Battle of Stalingrad. That, uh, what purpose would that, why, 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 um, because Stalingrad was an advantageous location and the people who died there were considered acceptable losses. Yara, computer, show the gallery General Sherman's march to the sea. So much waste. That can't be intentional, can it? It was intentional. But Why? Because it rendered the enemy unable to use resources Sherman couldn't keep. Computer, assemble and show video grouping RTS games. The translator can't have gotten that right. Those are military tactical simulations, higher level than anything I've ever seen or heard of. No, they aren't. Those are games, toys, for fun. And they're a couple hundred years out of date. From what I've seen... Nearly every human capable of coherent speech is capable of tactically overwhelming your federation. And since we're already here, in space, it's too late for you to say no. So I'll ask again, what do you have to offer us? End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.